What's up guys, welcome back to my tech corner. In today's video, I'll be making a 100% guide on the H100X CPU cooler. Using some frequently asked questions in the comment section of my H100X Elite unboxing and review video, which if you haven't checked it out already, you should. Let's hop right into it. First things first, let's get the basic stuff out of the way. This is a connector, sometimes called a plug. This is a header, sometimes called a port. Your cooler is not the H100i RGB Elite. Your cooler does not get controlled through SATA power. Make sure your CPU is compatible with this cooler before purchasing it. Make sure your motherboard has the correct ports, or you have some way of controlling the pump and RGB of this device. And please, make sure your cooler fits inside your case before purchasing. Do your research before purchasing this cooler. The H100X Elite CPU cooler is a 240mm all-in-one cooler that has two SP120 RGB Elite fans. Each fan's max speed is 1500 RPM, pushing a max CFM of 47.73. So I recommend using the CPU cooler on a 65W TDP CPU and lower. I really don't recommend this cooler with any CPU higher unless you're running that CPU on stock. This cooler is great for light overclocking too. This cooler comes with pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't really have to worry about applying more. This all-in-one cooler comes with the correct hardware to mount your fans to the radiator and mount the radiator to the chassis of your case. The contents should have been 8 long fan screws, 8 short fan screws, 8 washers, and 4 thumb nuts. Let me demonstrate how to install the fans onto the radiator. Grab 8 of these long fan screws. The way these work is by going through the holes of the fan, and have just enough threads to screw onto the radiator and secure the fan. Screw down each fan using the long fan screws provided into the screw holes marked on the radiator. I'll point them out for you. Make sure not to over tighten the screws. Next, grab 8 of these small radiator mounting screws. They are used to mount the radiator to the chassis of your case. Place washers on each of them. This will protect your chassis paint from being scratched. Screw them down using the small screws provided into the screw holes marked on the radiator. I'll point them out for you. Do not tighten them too tight. Make sure you have the correct orientation for this cooler as well. The goal here is to make sure that the radiator is the highest point in this closed liquid loop. So you should mount the radiator either on the top of your case, or on the front of your case with the tubing facing down like so. Remember, what matters is efficiency, not looks. Make sure to experiment with this cooler as the way it's orientated may have a negative or positive impact on its performance on cooling your CPU. Use the correct retention hardware for your CPU. There are bags marked for AMD AM4, AM5, Intel LGA 1200, 1156, 1155, 1151, 1150, 2066, 2011 3 and 2011, and LGA 1700. Each bag has the correct mounting hardware for your CPU and motherboard. The way that you use said retention hardware is as follows. For Intel LGA, grab the correct backplate for your motherboard and secure it onto the back of your motherboard like so. Usually these have some kind of adhesive to keep it on there. Then grab your correct socket standoffs. Screw them down until finger tight. Then place the correct sockets mounting brackets on your all-in-one. Then place your all-in-one onto the IHS of your CPU. Make sure to remove the plastic under the cold plate of your all-in-one before mounting. Align the holes of your mounting brackets with the top of the threads of the standoffs. Then, once it's mounted, grab your four thumb nuts and screw them down on each standoff. Make sure to screw them down in a star formation. This will evenly spread out the thermal paste. Stop when it's tight and don't over tighten it. For AM4, remove the existing mounting brackets and leave the original motherboard backplate as shown. Then, install the standoffs as shown. Tighten them finger tight. Then place the AM4 mounting brackets onto the all-in-one pump. You may need to remove the plastic connector and Intel LGA mounting brackets before doing so. Next, align the holes of your mounting brackets with the threads of the standoffs. Then, hold the cooler in place. Have your four thumb nuts ready. Grab them, place them, and tighten them in a star formation. This will evenly spread out the thermal paste. Stop when tight and do not over tighten. The way that this all-in-one cooler connects and gets its power is through this connector. This is a 3-pin DC connector. It can fit a 4-pin PWM connector like so. It will receive power and work. 
The best locations for this connector on your motherboard would be your CPU fan header or your all-in-one pump header if your motherboard has those. The way that your fans get their power and spin is through this connector. This is a 4-pin PWM connector. This connector can fit inside any of the 4-pin PWM headers on your motherboard. The best location for your radiator fans on your motherboard would be the CPU optional header if your motherboard has it. Or if your pump is connected to the all-in-one pump header, connect your radiator fans to the CPU fan header. Keep in mind, Corsair supplied a PWM splitter so you can have both of the fans get controlled by one port. If you're controlling your all-in-one cooler speed using a Corsair digital RGB and PWM fan controller, connect your pump's 3-pin DC connector into the PWM header 1. Then grab your first radiator fan's PWM connector and connect it into PWM header 2. Then grab your second radiator fan's PWM connector and connect it into PWM 3 header. Keep in mind this configuration works best on a Commander Core or Commander Core XT. When you're done, it should look like this. The RGB on this all-in-one cooler can be controlled with relative ease. The way the RGB on this pump head and fans get controlled is through this connector here. This is a Molex SL port, but I call it the Corsair 4-pin RGB port. The pump and both fans have one. The best budget-friendly way to control the RGB on all three of these items is using the included Molex SL to ARGB splitter adapter. Connect the pump head's 4-pin RGB connector into header 1. Then, connect the Radiator Fan 1's connector into header 2. Then connect Radiator Fan's 2 connector into header 3. Then, if your motherboard has one, find a 3-pin 5V ARGB header. It will look like this. It has 3 pins and is either black or gray. Connect your ARGB connector into the 3-pin ARGB header. If your motherboard doesn't have an ARGB header, you can either purchase a Corsair Digital RGB and PWM fan controller such as the Commander Core or Commander Core XT, or you could purchase an ARGB controller off of Amazon or Newegg for less than $20. If you are controlling your all-in-one's RGB through a Corsair fan controller such as the Commander Core or Commander Core XT, connect your pump head's 4-pin Molex SL connector into RGB header 1, then connect your radiator fan 1's 4-pin Molex SL connector into RGB header 2. Then connect your Radiator Fan 2's 4-pin Molex SL connector into RGB header 3. If you are controlling your all-in-one's RGB through Corsair IQ and you have enabled auto-detect on your digital RGB and fan controller, it will show up as an LL120 RGB fan. Your SP RGB Elite fans will show up as an 8 LED fan. The LL120 is your pump head. The two 8 LED fans are your radiator fans. If you're able to use the software to change the sequence of the devices that your lighting effect goes through. You're also able to control the speed of your pump and fans through IQ. If you're controlling your all-in-one fans speed through the motherboard, make sure to adjust the curve for the pump and fans directly in your motherboard's respective BIOS. Keep in mind, the box has a QR code that brings you straight to the Corsair installation manual and they even have a video to help. Anyways, that'll have to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this 100% guide helped, and if you think I missed anything, please go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one.